Hello and welcome to the United for Math series performing decimal operations. In this series, we will be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing decimal numbers. In this lesson specifically, we'll be adding and subtracting decimals. It's really important that students have a strong knowledge of adding and subtracting, especially with borrowing and regrouping. The trick to adding and subtracting decimals is that we line up the decimal places. So let's take a look at our first problem. Here we have 4 and 7 tenths plus 10 and 24 hundredths. We need to write this vertically in order to solve. So I'm going to write 4 and 7 tenths first. And remember, the trick is to line up the decimal points. So I'm going to put my decimal point here and then write out the rest of this number. So I have 10 and 24 hundredths. I like to tell students to put a zero placeholder right here. That'll help them when they're adding and subtracting. So here we're adding. 0 plus 4 is 4. 7 plus 2 is 9. Bring our decimal places right down. 4 plus 0 is 4. And our 1. So 4 and 7 tenths plus 10 and 24 hundredths is 14 and 94 hundredths. So remember, when we're adding decimals, we need to line up those decimal places. Let's take a look at a harder problem. Here we have 12 plus 3 and 9 tenths. You'll notice that there's no decimal place in the whole number 12, but every whole number has a decimal. The decimal place always comes right after the whole number. That's important to remember when we go to line up our decimal places. So I'm going to write over here 12 with my decimal place plus, let's put our decimal point down first, that way we know where it is, line up our 3 in the 1s and the 9 in the 10s. Again, let's put our 0 placeholder up here. Now we're ready to add. 0 plus 9 is 9. We've got our decimal places lined up. 2 plus 3 is 5 and 1. So 12 plus 3 and 9 tenths is 15 and 9 tenths. So remember, when adding decimals, the decimal places must be lined up. And putting that zero placeholder in can really help you. Also important to remember, when we're dealing with just whole numbers, the decimal point comes right after that whole number. Let's take a look at a subtraction problem. Here we have 17 and 5 tenths minus 2 and 93 hundredths. The same rules apply as we were adding decimals, now we're subtracting them, so the decimal places have to be lined up. So over here, I'm going to rewrite 17 and 5 tenths. Bring my decimal down first so I know where to line up my numbers. Then I have 2 in the ones place, 9 in the tenths, 3 in the hundredths. I'm going to put that zero placeholder up here again and put my subtraction sign. This is where students have to have that strong knowledge of borrowing and regrouping. And you'll start to see where putting that zero placeholder in can really help us. Let's take a look. So here we see we can't take 3 from 0. So we come over to the 5, we make that a 4, and the 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. We can't take 9 from 4, so we have to borrow again. The 7 becomes a 6, the 4 becomes a 14. 14 minus 9 is 5. Now we get to our decimal places, so we'll put our decimal point right down. 6 minus 2 is 4. 1 minus nothing, or 0, is 1. So 17 and 5 tenths minus 2 and 93 hundredths is 14 and 57 hundredths. Next, we're going to take a look at another subtraction problem that tends to trick students. Let's take a look at how we work this one out. Here we have 28 minus 0 and 27 thousandths. So remember when we did the subtraction problem, when we have a whole number, we put the decimal place right after that whole number. We'll move it over here. We have 28 with our decimal point behind it minus, let's put our decimal point down right here, 0 in the ones, 0 in the tenths, 2 in the hundredths, 7 in the thousandths. So up here we can put our 0 placeholders so students understand that there is a 0 value up there. 
Now let's solve. You can't take 7 from 0, so we come over here to borrow. We can't borrow from the 0. We can't borrow from this 0, so we have to come all the way over to the 8 to borrow a 7. This 0 becomes a 10, but then we have to give this 0 value. So we have to continually borrow and regroup until we come to our end number and we're ready to subtract. 10 minus 7 is 3. 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 0 is 9. We have our decimal places lined up, so we're going to bring our decimal place right down. 7 minus 0 is 7, and 2 minus 0 is 2. So 28 minus 27 thousandths is 27 and 973 thousandths. It's important to remember that when adding and subtracting decimals, we must line up those decimal places. It also helps to know that when we have those empty spaces, we can put in those zero placeholders so students understand that that empty space has a value of zero. Also note that when we have a whole number, the decimal place is right after that whole number. We look forward to seeing you in our next lesson where we will be multiplying decimals. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.